Hello, friends and lovelies. I am so excited today. Oh, I'm going to turn my phone on silent. We don't need any of that. I am super excited. We're going to talk about cycles today real quick. One of the neat things about the Joy Guild is in Red Tens, we only have a little bit of time that I can be like, okay, here's the things you need to know. And then it's like, okay, like, let's do a meditation or something like that. So this way I can give you some more in-depth information um, for you to dig into. And I'm super excited about it. Um, so if you are a femme person, if you are a woman, if you have um, a menstrual cycle, or if you have hormones, because even guys, they go through the similar cycle. In our tent on Friday night, we're going to be talking about um, kind of the burnout cycle and how that impacts us um, when we're burning bright and burning out and kind of how that works with our nervous systems as well. Um, but our menstrual cycles, um, which I'm going to be talking about hormonal cycles and menstrual cycles just kind of interchangeably, these impact us in a big way. So a lot of times for the world, we treat humans as solar people, but really the sun 24 seven, 365. I mean, not even the sun is 365, but that's how we treat humans, right? Just go, go, go all of the time. But like, this is not sustainable. Look around, look around, look around, right? It's everywhere we see people are burning out and we're exhausted because the way we're taught to do world is from like factory settings, literally, um, where you just go and they just use the body and they use the humans to get things done. And that's not how we're meant to function, right? Um, so the moon cycle is about 28 days and so is the average woman cycle. And I'm using woman, but um, this is inclusive for anybody with hormones um, that are estrogen rooted. Um, if you have birth control, this also applies to you. It's just birth control kind of puts you on a different cycle, but you're still cycling just in different ways. And I'll get to that in a little bit as well. So just trust me. Um, so the lunar cycle is 28 days, right? So is the woman cycle. And so we go through four different phases, just like the moon goes through our four different phases. Magic. And so what you can do with this is you can tune in because I always thought, and we were taught, right, that your menstrual cycle is really just when you're bleeding at the end, but really your cycle is four different phases that includes so much stuff and different energy shifts, different hormones, that this is just one part of a bigger thing that we can use for our benefit. And so when we think about the lunar system of when we're working and arching, we have these ebbs and flows, just like the ocean. And when we work in this way, where we have times that we go and times that we rest, we're going to be more efficient humans as well, which is just handy. And this is good across the board because nobody can sustain without burning out at the high performance rate of like the maiden stage, which I'll get to in a second. So there's four different stages. I'm going to go through each stage. I also posted a little cheat sheet for you that you can use while you watch this. You can pull it up. It's in the Mighty Network site, which is also where this video is going to reside. Okay. <sighs> Section one. Um, this is the waning, waxing, I lied. This is the waxing moon. And so what this means is like in the moon, think of it like you're flipping chapters of a book. That's how the moon goes as well. And this is how our cycle goes as well. So your first stage of your cycle is technically your menstrual stage, but we're going to get to that later because day what your first day and your last day are the same day, but we're going to talk about that in a minute. So your very first stage, technically speaking, is your virgin maiden stage. This is the archetype. So there's different archetypes. Archetypes are ways that we see the world and we perceive the world. Um, kind of almost like stereotypes, but a little different because we use these in myth and legends and pass down. So we have queen, we have um, virgin, we have wild woman, we have crazy woman, we have bitch, we have witch, we have all of these different things, right? And words that we use in king, joker, um, but we can use them to view ourselves through a lens of healing. And we're gonna talk about archetypes later, more in depth. Um, but I just want to give you kind of a rough draft of why I'm saying these things, because sometimes when we say, oh, I have the energy, I'm in my virgin stage right now, I'm in my maiden stage, it can give us a different outlook to look through of, hey, right now I'm in my wild woman stage because my hormones are going all over the place. Oh, right now I'm in my sage stage or I'm in like my witch stage and just need to like chill and I need to calm down. Kind of gives us permission to explore the way we interact with the world in a new way right? So our first stage is our maiden virgin or a person unto themselves. Um, there's a lot of attachment for some people for these archetypes in relationship to men and relationships to sex, but just know that a virgin is somebody who, 
who belongs to themselves, regardless of sexual activity. Um, so you can think about it in that way as well. Um, but this is when your womb lining is growing, your estrogen is going up, um, your progesterone had just reached its peak, so your progesterone is going down, your estrogen is going up, you've got a lot of energy, and you're like, okay, let's do things. Also, if you came off your, your period, and I'll talk about this too in a little bit when I get to the menstrual cycle of things, when you're coming off of that, your energy is going to be low. And so this kind of going high, sometimes it can be like, okay, like, let's go. Like I got some energy, but it kind of might feel a little frazzly if you haven't really rested and rejuvenated so that you can go into this next stage with like good energy. So this is a great time to reach out. This is a great time to get things done. If you need to do accounting or something that you've been putting off for a long time, like this is the stage to do it in. Um, others may lack energy that you have. Have you ever noticed that sometimes during the month, you're just like, yes, let's get it done. We can do this. We can clean the couch. Like we'll go run those errands. We'll get like 20 things done today on a Saturday. Maybe we'll plant a garden. I don't know. This is that stage. This is like, this is you. Um, if you are on birth control or don't have your ovaries anymore, anything like that, you can use the moon stages for all of these things and start charting. I'm going to do a video in a week and a half about cycle charting and how we can use that. Um, because just because your hormones might be less, even if you're on birth control, your hormones are still doing the shift. Even if you're a guy, you still have shifts in your hormones. It's just a matter of being aware of them. So just so you know, you still have the ability to tap into these things, even if you aren't cycling, because this is a healthier way to live because we cannot do 24 seven, 365. Okay, so, but when you are in this high stage, we also need to give other people grace because they may not be, right? Have you ever been like, hey, how's it going? And they're just like, I just wanna curl up in bed. And you're like, great, cool. Sometimes, um, but please be gracious and generous with the people around you um, because maybe they're in their fourth stage and they're just like, I just need to like chill away from the world because sometimes we just need to rest. We need to nourish, right? There's times for go, there's times for no. Um, so, Something that has been super helpful for me is when you have this high energy, when you're feeling good, when you're given, when you're doing all the stuff, people are going to be like, oh, she's got a lot of energy. I'm going to ask them for help or I'm going to ask them to do X, Y, Z. Don't say yes yet, unless it's like Oprah asking you to come on her show, then obviously you say yes. But if you can, if there's the room and the space for you to give it a little bit of time, maybe like a couple of weeks for the length of your cycle, so you can talk about it and think about it. Because what happens is right now you're like, yeah, of course, I got the energy. I got all the stuff. I could do it. I could do all the things like load up the backpack, like on the let, let's go Autobots roll out. But in three weeks, when you're in your wild woman stage and your energy starting to get tired, and then you're in your like, your new moon stage, your menstrual stage, you're just like, okay, like, oh, I wish I wouldn't have said yes to that. That regret that like, oh, I knew it because your intuition is going to be higher then. I'll talk about that in a minute, but you're going to be able to know yes, no, and not feel guilted in it. Because so often our first response is yes, no problem. I can do that. But did we actually weigh our plates? Did we look at what we have on our, like in our dockets right now? Plus right now with the world going on, we might not be able to do as many things as we used to be able to do. And that's okay but we have to use our words. If you don't use your words, people can't hold it against you because you didn't ask for what you need. And it sucks because we want everybody else to be mind readers, but we get angry when they want us to be mind readers. Or maybe that's just me. So I always, you, I use the phrase like, let me bleed on it. I'm gonna moon time it. Like I'm gonna moon mullet, whatever you wanna call it. Not like the moon has a mullet, but you're mulling it during the moon. There we go. I get excited and talk with my hands and my camera's like, I don't know what to do with this. Okay. So this is just to give you tools to not be guilted or coerced into anything. Even 10 minutes, give me 10 minutes to think about this. Give me two days to think about this. When we have this space to think about it and we're not like, okay, we can objectively look and y'all, this is what the joy guild is there for go live, post in there and be like, Hey, I have this opportunity. I'm not quite sure. Like, yes, it feels good, but also like something just feels icky and off. If that's something, and we're going to talk about boundaries. I think it's next month or the month after, because it's one of my favorite topics to talk about that itchiness. When something makes you go, ah, 
there's something there. There's something to be aware of. But when we're in this high energy of like, yes, like, let's do it. You don't always know it until it's too late, until you already gave your word. And if you're trying to be a person for your wood, then you totally get screwed over depending on the length of time it is. Then you got to backtrack, all that jazz. So if you just say, you know what? Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you for this offering. Give me a few days and I'll think about this. Give me three weeks and I'll get back to you. You know what? I'll talk to you on the first of next month. I got a few things on my plate. I'll be able to evaluate then. You can say this in such a generous way. Um, people talk about brutal honesty, but where's the kind honesty? Where's the generous honesty, right? We can say no in ways that are affirming and helpful and don't like be like F you to the world. Like we don't need to do that. We're joyful beings, we're artisans of life. The way we show up in relationship to other people gives them permission to do the same because people don't know that they can actually say no to people. This is also something I'm learning, but it's very helpful to know, so I'm telling you now. Okay, feel good, moving on. So that was the estrogen, like this is the waxing moon, your virgin, maiden, person unto themselves, estrogen's going high, your womb lining is growing, got a lot of energy. Waxing moon. That is that stage. Okay. Next stage. Done, done, done. This is your creatrix, your creative, your nurturing one, your mother archetype. This is this stage. This is like the full moon where you're like, here I am, you know, like here all the anyways. Okay. This is when you're nurturing, you're like, let's make letters to write to our family on homemade paper. I'm going to build the garden. This is like the, we're doing the action. If you need to have hard conversations, babes, this is the time for it. This is the time to reach out to the person that you've been in conflict with. And you're like, I don't know what's going on. Like what's happening. This is the time to do it because you're going to feel more grounded. Your estrogen is at your height. So you're going to be able to have those nuanced conversations without so much pain and hurt getting in the way. Although also because this is mother stage, this is also mama bear stage. Um, if things that you love are being attacked while you're in this phase, you may find yourself reacting very strongly in a protective way. So just something to be aware of because you can use this to your benefit, right? Um, this is also um, for women who can become pregnant this is the stage, if you don't wanna become pregnant, you need to be aware of this. A lot of people think that this lands in the middle of your cycle, like spot on. Your first stage is about seven to 10 days, um, depending, this stage is about three to five. And sometimes it's in the middle of your cycle, sometimes a little early, a little later, it depends. And your cycle can change on medicine, birth control, alcohol, sleep, stress, food, life, <laughs> like all of the things our cycle can do. So there's a lot of like weird guilt about, oh, you know, I'm on birth control, so I don't cycle or, oh, you know, I do this. And so now my cycle, like it is all good. We're all different. We're all growing. Our cycles are always shifting. The cool thing is this is just one more tool in your tool belt to learn and to understand yourself and to check in, right? To see what you need. That's all this is, is this is just another tool in your tool belt. So there's no shame, no guilt in any of this. Um, but if you are for, not but, and, if you are fertile and you want to know when you can get pregnant, when you don't want to get pregnant, um, because some people react really badly to birth control. Hello, my name is. And so Amazon makes these um, fertile strips, uh, ovulation strips that you can pee on, and they let you know when you're ovulating too. Sometimes people release two eggs, which is really good to know because I know people who got pregnant that way because they thought that they had this cycle in the middle. They had their mother creatrix archetype in the middle of their cycle when they had it twice or it was more on the end of things. So knowing exactly when this is, you also might notice your cervical fluid. This is again for my fem folks, your cervical fluid might be like really sticky and egg whitish. This is also that stage. So you can tell when that is more dense um, that you're in this phase, if that makes sense. You may also have cramps because what's happening in your ovaries is every other month, one ovary is really snake. So one month it's like, hey, and the other month it's like, hey. So it's kind of like a very slow snowball fight and they never actually hit each other um, because you totally need that metaphor in your brain. You're so welcome. Um, okay, if you feel a nudge to step out in something, go do it. Like this is the time if you wanna make a meal for somebody, also, this is a really perfect time to start prepping your food now for like the next two weeks because your progesterone is going to start going up, your estrogen is going to start going down, and you might not be in the mood. So as much prep as you can kind of do for the next two weeks to give yourself grace, this is time to put 
calendar meetings, like all this stuff, like to do, get it done here. This is superwoman feeling sexy vibes, all of the stuff, go team go. So this again, this is your full moon stage, three to five days, mother creatrix, nurturing archetype and peak of estrogen. But also when you might be if you're pregnant. So be careful. Okay. Moving on. See, isn't this nice? Usually I say this in like four minutes. I try. That's not true. It's usually like six, but this way I can give you more information. It's just, oh, I'm excited. Um, I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, please type them below. Your next stage. I think my dog is outside. Sorry. Two seconds. Hold on. Left my dog outside. That's my bad. Um, he's so quiet. Okay, premenstrual. This is your wild woman stage, your crazy woman stage, your enchantress stage. Um, this is when your estrogen is going down, your progesterone is going up. Um, for trans women, this is a lot of um, when their cycles kind of evening out, and kind of figuring out. They might come across this like crux more often because their hormones are sh uh, shifting. Uh, for my ladies who are going into menopause, your hormones are still happening. Your cycle's still happening. Just think of it as is your cycle's normally doing this. It's just kind of evening out more like this. Does that make sense? So this, because the hormones are shifting though, you might feel more aligned in this area more often. Also think about this as stages of life as well, right? We have like when we're kids and we're teens, then we got the mother stages of like 20 to like 35. Then we got our wild woman stages of 35 to about 50. And then we've got crone or to like 55. And then we got crone, sage, wise woman, 55 and up. So think about it in that way too, of like what stage, not only in your cycle are you in, but in life, right? And then with our world in our um, year cycle, we have our spring as our maiden. We got our summer as our mother. We got our fall as our wild woman. And then we got in winter, what do we want to do? We just want to crawl up. We want to hibernate. We want to like chill and be nourished. And that's our sage. So there's three different ways that you can interact and the moon, four different ways you can interact with this. Isn't that great? Okay. So this is my favorite stage. This is also about seven to 10 days, depending. This is your Premenstrual time, enchantress, wild woman. This is like, y'all, truth, but nothing but the truth. This is like your intuition is ha, huh, and your BS meter is way high. And you're going to know when somebody's being shady or like off. This is also um, uh, the chandelier, the chandelier effect when things pile on so much and then you just like snap. This is that when you've been go, go, going, the, your body's starting to be like, okay, like, I got this energy and I got this like franticness, but also I need to kind of calm down. If you're not kind of calming down or channeling your energy well, because it might be that frantic creative energy, like go make something, go run, go dance, go move your body, go um, create something with your hands, do art, like channel it, poetry, whatever it is, but channel out that energy. If you don't use your energy, your energy will use you right? We've all been around that woman that's just like, and you're like, whoa, whoa, do you need a nap? Do you need an orgasm? Do you need Jesus? Like food? Do you need a snack? What's up? Um, so just be really careful with your words because they can be easily become bitter and bitey and unnecessary. Um, also, if you're going 24, 7, 365, this is when you're going to crash. This is when you're going to crash and you're going to be up at 3 a.m. drinking a bottle of wine and eating a box of brownies, which there's nothing wrong with that unless you don't want to be doing that. And then it's like you're tripping into a cycle rather than using it for your benefit, surrounded by like people watching Disney movies, um, which we can't do right now because COVID. Okay. If you're also feeling exhausted like once a month and you just kind of like have a breakdown, I call it my black bead day. Um, we made cycle bracelets at one point and I had one bead because there's always one day of my cycle that I just like, I just cry and I'm overwhelmed and I feel overwhelmed. And it's because I can feel my hormones just like <laughs> high-fiving as they go, right? But if you're having a day every month that you're just like, what is wrong in the world and overwhelmed and it feels almost like clockwork and you're surprised. You're like, I don't even know what's going on. And then three days later, you like start bleeding. 
that might be because this is your cycle, right? And sometimes we act surprised like, oh, I forgot my cycle was coming up or like my pre my menstrual time, I forgot new moon was coming up, right? Where I'm bleeding. If you know it's coming, then you're like, okay, like this morning I went and I charted out my next 25 days. I'm on day 14 this morning. So I was like, hey, day 25, because usually I'm like day 25, day 26-ish when I start bleeding. I'm like, don't schedule much this week because if I don't, I pack in the week and I'm exhausted by the end. So we can kind of pre-start planning. Does that make sense? This is why we're giving you the tools. So if you're aware of what your body is doing and kind of what your flow is, even if you have a 40 day cycle or 33 day cycle, or even if it's more subtle or you're on birth control, but you have a couple days a month that are a little weird, you can kind of know and calibrate your life accordingly. Okay, so your creative juices might be like really flowing um, during this time. And you might have that frenetic energy. So just use it well. So that is our premenstrual. That is our waning moon. The moon is waning. Um, we just had a full moon. So we're in, we're in waning zone right now. Yes. Okay. So bleeding menstrual time. This is your new moon time. I don't know why I'm making the symbol. This might be, I'll work on it. Okay. So bleeding menstrual time. This is your sage, your witch, your wise woman, your crone. Um, your wise one. Um, this video is more for um, femme folk um, because of cycling hormonal oils. But for this, sometimes it's like we see the blood and then it clicks and we're like, oh yeah, getting my period. Like we forget every month, right? And it's just like, how do we do this every time? Like, why are you surprised? Um, this is a cycle, but we're not taught to keep track. So we keep being surprised and caught off guard. Um, and so we can look back and be like, oh, that's why I was weird last week. Or like, oh, that's why I was freaking out. Because is it them or is it our hormones, right? Sometimes, oh, and we're going to talk about this in vulnerability, vulnerability month of heart wounds and all these things of when um, we get offended or when we have that reaction of like, sometimes it's because people are malicious. Sometimes it's by accident. Sometimes it's like, we're exhausted. There's lots of different reasons. So we're going to dive into that then, but this, this time and the time before of the enchantress time, the wild person, when these times when we get hit and something comes up for us and we're like, Oh, like what we can react way easily because our intuition is really high and our BS meter. Like we don't have patience for it. Like I do not have the time. Like you need to pay me for this nonsense, Barbara. Um, Barbara's my, my inner critic. We'll talk about that in creativity week. Um, okay. So right now your progesterone is high. Your estrogen is low and your uterine walls are shedding. Um, if you're a femme folk and this is what's happening, but also, just a heads up, if you do bleed, this is your actual blood in your site, your system that's leaving you. So a lot of people think it's different blood, but it's the same, same. Um, and then there's different things, if you would like, that you can do with your menstrual blood. And there's lots of different things you can use. You can use, uh, there's cups, there's pads, there's tampons, um, there's period underwear, lots of good stuff. I can post um, some of my favorite stuff below this if you're looking for good things, um, because all they told us was pads and tampons. And now there's like, there's a whole new world there's so many things you can use. So just a heads up. This is a really good time to vision and dream and journal and like dig in. If you slow down during this time, I know it's also painful, but this is also, okay, not all. It's kind of like the spiritual warfare slash like physical realm of things. If you slow down during this time, your body is going to be like grateful because sometimes we go, go, go. And then she gets angry. Right. And we're like, why are you angry? And it's like, you guys are just, and you're like, it's fine. Your body's trying to tell you things. Right. And sometimes we have extra things, right. We have chronic illness. We have like disease, like something's going on in our body that our body's trying to fight off or do other things. But when we're exhausted, our body is on red alert. And so our cycles, this stage, this new moon stage, all our body wants to do is like, um, what's the song? All our body wants to do is win, win, win. But it's like cuddle, 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 no matter what. Um, welcome to Jukebox with AJ. This makes no sense, but you're so welcome. Okay. So this is also the time when I said like bleed on it or moon mullet. If you're charting the moon and you're kind of going along with that, look back at those things. Do they resonate? Are you like, yes, cool. Let's do that. I'm so down. That sounds like a win. I'm in. Then cool. Great. You can say yes but wait till next week. This is your time to like chill and vision. Do lots of journaling, take naps, eat good food, eat that chocolate, 
and eat things that have good iron, eat some leafy greens, eat like your non-alcoholic wine and your water, like have your margarita and enjoy some like chicken and broccoli and stuff like refuel your body because you're releasing a lot of blood, but like also your hormones are doing this. Think of it like you're going through a car wash and there's that time at the end where you go and there's just lots of heat and you're like, okay. And it's just kind of quiet. This can be that time for you. But if you're trying to do lots of stuff during this time, you're just going to want to shiv people with tiny corn cob holders. And that's no fun. Trust me. So not that I have shivved anybody with a corn cob holder. <laughs> just know that I'm not wanted in any states for that. Um, so exercise can help with this, but be gentle. We push ourselves so hard. Like, can you just give yourself grace a little bit to ease off the gas pedal? The stuff will still be there next week. There's still going to be stuff to do. But if you kind of pre-plan your week, and we'll talk about this in another month of kind of prepping your stuff and your months and scheduling and habits um, during our habit month, take some hot baths, um, frozen pizzas. Maybe you exchange meals with a friend. Like she cooks a meal for you when you're in your new moon stage and you cook a moon meal for her when you're in your full moon stage, right? Your nurturing stage. Um, if you don't rest, here's the, here's the catch because I'm a fish, right? So there's always a catch. If you don't rest, you're going to go into your virgin stage, your maiden stage, that like waxing stage, right? The first one I told you about, frantic and overwhelmed and exhausted. And I also want to say, sometimes we don't have a choice. Sometimes everything is happening and we just have to power through. And you might hate me for this a little bit, but here we go. I had a conversation with somebody the other week and it was like, if this is apocalypse, I swear I have a point. If this is apocalypse, how do you want to show up? No BS. If this is indeed the end of the world, how do you want to show up right now? Because sometimes we can't control whether or not it's happening, right? But we can control what we're doing. And so if burning out is not an option, right? What do you need? What are your steps before that of like, okay, I'm getting overwhelmed. You know, um, something I learned the other month is like one through 10, like make an overwhelmed list of like, hey, I'm feeling like between a one and three. I'm going to play some music or I'm just going to like walk around my house for five minutes and come back to it. If I'm at a 10 and I'm just like, um, I just need to take a hot bath. I need to go into my clearing. I need to go into the forest. I need to like take a, go to the fire, something, you know? So there's like different ranges of things. Five is like, I'm just going to take an hour, go watch a fun Netflix show. I'm watching the great British breaking show. There's like no drama. It's all fun. And it looks delicious. Food. So what are your kind of levels? Because if, everything craziness is happening, right? And like, look at the world. The craziness is happening. But the reason you're in this group, right, is because you're an artisan of life. You're looking for a better way to do things. The way everybody else is doing stuff, you don't have to do. And this is something I'm still very much learning and trying to figure out in real time is what does it look like? What is the life I want to look like? How do I want to show up? So I'm asking you the same question. This stuff might be unmovable. There are things you cannot control right now. Put that over here. What can you control? How can you show up in that? Is it possible to give yourself a little bit of prep time so that when you sit down for the Zoom meeting, you're not like, okay, like you can have be here for a minute. Like sometimes I listen to music beforehand. I'm like, okay, don't want to be in this meeting. It's okay. After this, we'll go put our feet in the grass for a minute. We can do this. We can do hard things. And it seems so ridiculous and it seems kind of cheesy. But you know what? It works. Sometimes I bribe myself with ice cream too. And that also helps. Um, so I just, I really want to extend you this invitation to ask yourself the hard questions because sometimes things are outside of our control. Sometimes we can't help the way our, we react or our nervous systems just go shoom, like, right? So we have our emotional systems. We have our nervous systems. We have like our sexual systems, which are kind of interrelated. We have mental, emotional, like all of these things are so interconnected that when your body gets overwhelmed, sometimes there's not much you can do except for just crying it out or like rage yelling it. And those are also options. And you should have a range of things so that it isn't perpetual. Does that make sense? That that's not the way that you want to live, even if everything's crazy. 
what can you do? So I'm not lecturing, offering goodness. Um, so that's, that's the cycle. That's the cycle of things. Uh, that's a lunar cycle. That's our hormonal cycle as women and as femme folk. Um, and it's our choice. It's our choice to react with it, interact with it, respond with it, use it. And like, sometimes you might hate it and that's okay, but you can hate something and it still be there, right? Um, it can still be true. And so if this can just give you more language to use and interact with, and maybe you're in your virgin cycle and you're like, girl, I'm feeling like full witch mode today. Like, don't at me. I will eat your child. Uh, you know, like you're like, Wicked Witch of the Woods, or like maybe you're having a Glen today. It's all good. But then you know, and you can be like, okay, today's Wild Woman Day. What do I need to kind of like channel this? Can I add in some like Viking dance music or can I go for a run? Options. We're just giving ourselves options. Okay. I love you all. I'm so excited for our guild tent on Friday night. Um, Doors will open at 6.45 because of the way I'm keeping it open. So if you show up at 7, that's okay. Uh, it will be recorded and it will be up the next day. Um, if you're interested, we still have um, regular tent spots for public tents. We are doing habits this Saturday. And then on the 23rd, we're doing instincts, which I'm just like, ah, yes, it's going to be so much goodness. So I love you all. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'd love to talk to you more about this. And I'll talk to you soon. Sing your soul song. <laughs>